I'm a doctor in South Africa. Of course, there's 800 of us that are unemployed. I'm a doctor in South Africa, and of course, there's 800 of us ready to work. I'm a doctor in South Africa, and of course, I want a government post because I need that in order to specialize. I'm a doctor in South Africa, and of course, we only have three options. First one is to locum. We can't do that because there's not enough locums to absorb all 800 of us. Second option is to open a GP practice. We can't do that either because we can't afford to take out a loan and pay it back. Our third option is to move abroad and work in the UK, Canada, the US or New Zealand. And we can't do that either because we can't afford the process, which is really expensive. I'm a doctor in South Africa and of course our government clinics have patients sitting in queues waiting for longer than four hours because they are understaffed. I'm a doctor in South Africa, of course, I have colleagues in the hospital right now working 26-hour shifts, suffering from burnout because they're on the stalls. I'm a doctor in South Africa, and of course, I have a family to feed. I'm a doctor in South Africa, and of course, now I'm trying to do side hustles in order to pay my bills. I ask you again, what do 800 doctors do, sitting at home unemployed, ready to serve, but unable to serve? hello and welcome back to inside republic if you're new to the channel thank you for joining us kindly go ahead and subscribe subscriptions are free and make sure that you like this video in this video we will explore the economic hardships millions of south africans experience in finding work we will explore human tales behind the statistics from family and community devastation to nationality stability and growth so join us as we explore unemployment and the urgent need for solutions in south africa Hey, um, obviously not disrespectful at all. I feel like if you are pursuing a like, career in medicine, then I'm just going to answer generally. You study for six years, you have your two years of internship, one year of community service, and now you're at my point where I've become an independent practitioner. Um, so I would like to specialize, but to specialize, you have to do training through a government hospital. So you apply for posts, you wait to be called for interviews or to like just get one of those posts, which are very competitive. Um, you also like maybe waiting for someone to retire or someone else to go into private, like before one of those posts become available. Um, obviously, being a GP is like not for everyone, but it's also quite difficult. Like not everyone has the money to open up their own GP practice. So maybe you're going to wait for like another GP to employ you or um, yeah, like those are the routes you can take. Nothing prepared me for the pain and uncertainty I am feeling right now. Having to wake up every day and go to a call center, knowing fully well that had it not been for the unemployment rate, high unemployment rate in South Africa, I would have been a candidate attorney. I have been so unlucky with getting articles ever since last year to a point where I just decided to go to a call center. And this is not, I am not the first NLB graduate to go to a call center. I know a lot of people that have done that. Um, and to be quite honest, guys, and this is basically just transparency for those that are starting out. Um, this is not by any way trying to scare you guys, but there is this other side of LLB where most of us don't, you know, um, get to be part of the big five law firms and um, we're basically here. Um, I don't know. I have been applying and I have been unsuccessful every single time. Not even a sight of an interview. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what's wrong with my CV. Maybe there's something wrong with my CV. But I desperately want to be a candidate attorney. I want to be a candidate attorney so bad to a point where I'm willing to relocate to whatever province. I have invested so much time into my legal career. I'm literally on my sixth year, about literally my final year of master's, if God allows. But no sight of employment. The pain I feel and the way my heart gets so heavy whenever I have to wake up, get dressed and go to a call center. Oh! It, 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 
Ia di weka. Ia di weka. Ia di weka. I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm really, I'm hoping that something does come up for me. And I just want to know if I'm the only one that's in this situation or if there's other graduates who also, you know, are in the same situation as me who are working at jobs they didn't study for um, and, you know, are want to, are waiting for that email to say congratulations you know, waiting for that response. I'm not even getting response. I would have understood if maybe I'm getting a uh, rejection letters. Nothing, guys. Like, in rejection emails, I'm not getting anything. And it's so frustrating because the more I wake up and go to this call center, the more I literally want to give up on my dream. And, like, the only reason why that... The only reason that even made me um, a, a work at a call center was because I, I was like, you know what, it's December... Um, I need to pay my bills, like, my bills need to be paid, and, um, literally, I have no other choice, and I'm in this situation now, I'm grateful, because at least I'm, I'm able to pay my bills, and, you know, eat, but I would really love if God would show himself this year, and, if I could just get a job as a candidate attorney, it doesn't matter even if I earn 5000 or 3.5. I just want to be a candidate attorney. I want to finish my articles. I desperately want to finish my articles. A day in the life of an unemployed graduate. Yes, that's me. Every single morning, I am still in disbelief that I'm still unemployed. But I don't want to dwell much on that. Let me just take you through, guys, how I spend my day and basically how I survive my day because... One thing about being unemployed, being alone, you will start having thoughts of being distant. You will start questioning yourself and start questioning your purpose. But I don't want to dwell much on that. I just want to say I've been seeing a lot of videos about my unemployed on my FYP, and it brings me so much comfort because I thought I was the only one. Gandhi, I'm not alone. So I recently saw a video of post serve doctors, pharmacists, nurses, protesting outside the health officers at Bisho about being unemployed and the MEC said there's no such thing as an unemployed doctor. Whoever is saying that doctors are unemployed is basically lying. Now the response from the MEC was shocking and it got me thinking why would Umdanomdu risking their lives if they can be employed? Why would Umdanomdu ashiye is safe ya kinga peko kwabo ewe katika kanga pepisho kanti nyani msebenzi unai? Why are people in power and decision makers eager on invalidating the experiences zavandana babantu? And after so many questions, I finally got the answer. So through research that I've been doing and also the support from Youth Capital, a non-profit organization, we've come up to a conclusion that it is not that decision makers cannot change the high unemployment rate in South Africa. It is the fact that they don't want to. And a clear example of that is our president's response to Umdana asking him, Uncle Cyril, what can I do to find a job? Um, I'm searching for a job. And his response was, keep searching. That is a very problematic answer. The unemployment crisis in South Africa has had a significant impact on graduates, forcing many of them to seek professions or work that is unrelated to their subjects of study. And this tendency, known as underemployment, reduces the value of higher education and causes widespread unhappiness among young professionals. Graduates training occupations they never studied for frequently experience lower pay, limited career advancement and a mismatch between their skills and work needs. So this stifles personal and professional development while also resulting in a huge loss of economic potential. And as a result, regulations need to be established to bridge the gap between the education system and the labor market. Mina, if you see the same queen, turn my sugar. It's a moon in Gilalan in a lily. Gobble good like swagging echo. Mamma foot and swing our bone would have a whip. Get to think shampoo with a cook on the tang yelling at lily. 
uthi kwa damang papama. Mbonu tbe gili wana uma bengleli. Shuti bewi yimi king. Eto mwenye gisho kukwani tenza gala ekali. Minage kwa mchila mwa vile tuwa vila kasebe nzuzo wenzani. Inga ni inga nuna yezi mkichi mekanda, zi mkoto mekanda, mwaba pila niti na vila kasebe nzi. Uti ngitele lwa yi inga ani. Ngitele lwa yi inga ani makufunu wangalu mtu zutu nisi ngwa tuwa kambi mbini. Kupa vila yi kinte ingenza ani. Uti ngakale psuko. Bengu zutu nganti mina ganta mfune ni msebe nzi. Uti ngafuna. Kota ngeni nga yu kuti manje. Se ngeni nga yu connection. I qualification nji. Into unga ba na ufobise nga yu tungi. Na kisa ngeni nga yu manje. Kisa bia nzu connection. Uti mina nkatele mina. Selega nga nji uti nizbula. Parati wogila amba nukdelelo. Nukutunya nje nge nga nge mdala. Ma nge nga kutula ka alubona libe kulunu nga amla. Seng pendu wis tefe kaya, seng pendu wis din. Ma konte nga hambi gase, ma konte la se gayo konjwe mina. Shud seng pendu gyi pari kaya ngoba nga sebe nzi. Uti nga tel. Yo, hai. Kunzima. Kunzima. We need to check on ama family members that are not working. Abanga nbaku. Munga nga kolo nga sebe nzi. Ugaate zama. Check him. For nail. Just to check. Ugutu raiti. Numkipa shayo umoy. Guninga batu la guku. And it's too much. And guningi. And baboto. Sana. Tatabana na chumi ya a few days back. Bili kwa leta ala masumbona. Azoti. Haba chumi. Azote mshu sana. We are glowa. On your come call my friend. O ten, did you show me unemployment? The unemployment, you man. Meaning I'm put on unemployment, like I said. Meaning I'm put on yam. The unemployment. Go iye kile ondi lilisa. Tiben the stressa. That send him darling go go and pangeli. My life is not going how I wanted it to go. To the high and glory sang. We are men, man. Glowment, glowments. I'm the unemployment again. Nenza cute, nenza ndindi, tibuki kama mbini ngati, sendine maliza, sese sendis paye nena, heee. Oh my god, I need a job! I live the same life every day. I wake up at 1.30pm every day. I make the same stupid grilled cheese every day. I'm so over it. I'm sick, mom, I'm sick. Like, I'm actually sick. I'm sick, I'm ill, I'm sick. Sick, I'm sick! So the date is the 15th of July, it's a Friday, um, it's a Friday afternoon and I have literally waited all week to hear back from a job. Um, the interview went really well, I came back and I was like in such good spirits and I made like a whole TikTok about it and like everyone was like saying to me it's already yours claim it um and it's like about to be close of business on this friday and they were like just wait a week like we'll let you know by the end of next week and the fact that i like haven't heard anything is just like so it just makes me feel so defeated because you know there's always that one interview where you just feel like you know when like it's already yours and like i tried so hard i did all of my research before the interview and like the people were so nice and I kind of feel like I was already visualizing what my life would be like once I had that job. Um, and like thinking about all the things that I wanted to do. I'm just really sad. I 
I'm really sad and I'm really tired. Um, like I'm really tired of this job search. And I'm really tired of it just like not going my way. And I also know that I'm not alone. Like so many people are going through the same thing. But it's just really hard. And it sucks when like everyone around you is always asking me like, oh, how's the job stuff going? Um, have you heard back from anyone? And you're just like, no. <laughs> like, it's really hard. And today is just one of those days where I really just want to cry about it. And just allow myself to be sad. Because I really am really disappointed. Unemployment has a strong social and economic stigma, sometimes resulting in feelings of humiliation, loneliness, and low self-esteem. The anticipation and eventual rejection during a job interview can be especially depressing, smashing high expectations and aspirations of finding work. And this loop of rejection exacerbates the emotional strain, resulting in dissatisfaction and feelings of failure. Economically, chronic unemployment causes financial insecurity and dependency, hindering personal and communal development. The stigma associated with unemployment further marginalizes people, making it more difficult to break free from the unemployment cycle and achieve economic self-sufficiency. Just imagine your family members hiding food from you and you thinking maybe oh there's no food at home only to find out that no they're waiting for you to go to bed only for them to make food and eat whilst you are asleep and when it comes to graduates by improving communication and coordination between the sectors the education system and the labor market we can ensure that graduates have the skills required to buy the job market thus lowering unemployment and underemployment rates and supporting a more vibrant and inclusive economy. Thank you for watching. Bye.